We're here on Lake Erie today. This is um, early spring. Our water temp today is 44 to 46. We're on the south shore looking for a little bit warmer water and some active pre-spawn fish. But with it still being fairly cold, we're throwing blade baits this morning. This area that we're fishing is adjacent to a large sand flat and it's a main lake break where we've got a lot of rock and rubble in this area. Actually smooth rock for quite a distance up in here. It's got a lot of broken chunk rock on top of it. And as you can see, if you just look up on the shore here, a lot of this area here has actually got soil coming down to the water, but then you see the rock cliff section there. You've got a rock cliff section down below and a real high rock cliff section above, and that's all dolomite rock. And that's a sedimentary rock that kind of breaks away and it's real flat. You'd make patio stones out of it. So right in this area, we've got a real flat section of this rock and the fish like to get up on here and transition before they go into the broken up rubbly stuff to make their nests and spawn. What I find with the smallmouths is when they're traveling up into or out of these spawning areas, they tend to be, you know, just as if you were hunting, you know, deer or something. They kind of follow these transitions the same as another animal would follow a hedgerow or something of that nature. So what they'll do is they'll get on a transition where it goes from sand to rock and they'll just cruise all the way down that. And talking about those transitions, we we're talking about, you know, the way these fish travel on these transitions. So here in the spring, you know, as we're, as we're just starting to move up, we tend to make longer drifts or we'll actually put the trolling motor on real low and maybe mooch along at 0.5 miles an hour, 0.6 miles an hour, constantly watching the graph because these fish can be staged anywhere along these transitions. Nine times out of 10, you know, as soon as we find them, I'll go look at my graph and sure enough, there's a waypoint and then all of a sudden, we'll see it's a little pile of rubble or a, a big boulder. In this section, there are some boulders that are just huge. And anytime you can find a big boulder like that, there's normally two or three big fish relating to it. So today we're making long drifts and kind of looking for fish along the transitions. Once we find them, we may spot lock on them or we'll just continue to shorten our drifts then and key in on those key locations. There's one. That was a perfect classic tick on the fall. It was at the end of a long cast, probably the second or third twitch up. As the line was falling, I could see the line jump and right away feel the tick of, of the fish hitting it on the fall. So nice smallmouth, probably just under four pounds or right around that four pound range. Starting to show some color because we're fishing shallower than we were before. Um, smallmouths are a lot like chameleons and they really change color with their environment. So when you're catching them faded white fish in this cold water, pretty much know they've been sitting on sand and they've been deep and they've been cold. Now that we're getting a little bit shallow, we're gonna start to see more of the classic smallmouth look with the bars on their side. This one was pretty gold. So um, yeah, the shallower you get, the prettier the fish will be. Real effective method out here, especially in cold water. Of course, a lot of people like to throw spoons. I prefer to throw blade baits. With a blade bait, you gotta let the fish tell you what they want. I mean, because there are so many ways to fish it. You can rip jig it, which is, you know, looking for that reaction strike or when the fish are very aggressive. Today, we're just kind of tossing it out as far as we can. Um, the other nice thing about this steel shad is it's pretty aerodynamic, so it doesn't do a lot of twisting in the air. And then I'm just kind of slowly vibrating it up and letting it fall to the bottom. Let it hit the bottom and just a nice da 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 Follow your line back down with your reel. And most of these fish are hitting on the fall, so you'll feel the tick as it falls. We've also caught some, a lot of guys would call it yo-yoing, right next to the boat where we're just simply a good snap, let it fall to the bottom, a good snap, let it fall to the bottom. The key with the blade bait is always watch your line. As it's falling back down, as you're following that line, you'll just see it jump. A lot of times you'll feel it in your rod, but a lot of times you won't because as you're dropping your rod, you've got some slack in there. So you just want to watch that line and if you see it jump, you just simply snap back. Got him, he came right back. And he swallowed it. Just 
ate it. I had him hooked. I dropped it back down and bam, came right back. This one, I was kind of yo-yoing right at the boat and I actually, the fish came up and hit it and I nicked him with the hook, it lifted, continued to lift. Whenever you have a smallmouth bite, if you lose that fish or if that fish um, comes unbuttoned real quick, just give the bait back to them really quick and they normally will bite it the second time more aggressive as we can tell this one. I mean, he was hooked once, I lifted it, dropped it back and he just wanted to attack it. Once they go in attack mode, they're in attack mode. 